Oh, wonderful. That's good stuff. Um, what advice, uh, I go back to that, you were a student athlete. Mm -hmm. You won a scholarship. How difficult it is to be a student athlete. You have to get your grades, keep your grades going, plus you have to compete every weekend. Mm -hmm. You're in a different city, you're riding the bus, well, you were flying, I guess. Right. Some people ride the bus, some people carpool to different meets. Right. How difficult is it to, to straddle those two as a student athlete? It's very difficult. So difficult it made me change my major. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, being a student athlete, um, you know, um, it's really about balance. And life is about balance. And so um, you know that you have two things to do. You have to do your schoolwork and you have to run or whatever your sport may be. And so you, you don't have the two without each other. Right. You know, they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. You can lose your scholarship if your grades are not there. And, um, you know, you're... you're really on scholarship to run you know that's why so, they have you there so it's about performance yes. and so um you learn what's important you know um and it's not something to take lightly i think um oftentimes we have a lot of athletes that are putting everything into track and field mm -hmm. meaning that before they get um go off to school everything is about track 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 they're not doing their coursework they're not taking the sats and then by the end of the year, they, come they out. find out that they don't have a scholarship because they wow. haven't simply taken the SATs. Wow. And so you, even now in the Bahamas, this is something that's a really big problem. And um, we need to start putting it into their head. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just say this. Um, this point, in the Bahamas today, there is a... Well, I guess it may be worldwide, but I, I can only speak for here. I'm here most of the time. That um, the young kids are just doing some strange things. They're just, just way out. Mm -hmm. I knew when I was a uh, high school uh, student, and sports was good for me. It was a way of disciplining myself and so forth. I knew through the week I had to do certain things. On the weekends, I didn't do certain things. I wanted to be a great athlete. Um, what would you say to the young people now in this country, and even in the wider Caribbean, um, in reference to their behavior now? What would you say? What kind of advice can you give them? Because we're having a lot of problems in the schools today, in the school systems. And it's all over. Okay. It's all over. Well, dealing with the young kids now, um, I find that they come to me and they want to confide and they want to they wanna talk and... Um, I'm finding that the issues are just like, they're so real and they're so, um, they're so intense for, you know, when you look at this child and they're like so young mm -hmm. and it's just unbelievable. Some of the challenges that these kids are having. And one thing that I feel, I try to encourage them and most of these are track athletes to just really stay focused on track and field because I feel like a lot of our kids out there don't have outlets. They're not seeking positive stuff. And any time you're idle, you're going to get into a lot of negative, you know, activities. Exactly. And so, you know, we've, we've talked about issues um, such as pregnancy and sex and um, uh, drugs and just, you know, fights and domestic stuff. I mean, these kids are just coming with all sorts of issues. And so... You know, sometimes even as a, a coach, you're not just dealing with the on-track stuff, well, you're but you're with dealing with the off-track stuff. And yeah. so, you know, I, I listen to them and I try to give them some direction and some help, but I also try to, you know, um, encourage them with the track stuff because if they're at the track, then they're not sitting on the blocks. Um, if they're at the track, then they know, well, I have to go home and I have to do homework because there's only so much time in the day. And it really, really um, helps and it's really the difference between the kids that are going astray and the kids that have some kind of focus. And so, you know, I, I say find, find an activity, find um, a sport, um, a musical instrument, um, something that you're involved in, you know, so that you can, you can be focused. Good stuff. Well, we just have a couple of minutes left. Um, any parting uh, words of advice, generally? Um, You've had an outstanding career, <laughs> unbelievable career, unbelievable. I mean, you've, your name is etched in the, in the history books here. You have a street that's named after you. You know, when Hazley Crawford won the 100 meters uh, 
in the Olympics in Montreal, they named the stadium after him in Trinidad, of course, you know that. And then they've done some things for Otto Boulder and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, how does this make you feel, this, all this stuff? Um, just really humbled. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't look at it so much as myself. Um, I try to just think about it for what it is. Um, just a really great achievement. Um, something that's more for the country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just happen to be the person, you know, where that recognition is given. But like you said, you know, there are so many great athletes and, you know, people of all fields that are recognized. And so, you know, I'm happy to be the first. Um, I'm happy to drive on my um, highway yes. every day. Yes. And um, I'm just really humbled and, you know, just want to give back because of that. Thank you. I think that's a fitting note to end this program. I want to thank you very kindly for joining us on Dare to Be Great tonight. Thank you. Uh, my guest is Tony Williams Darling, Bahamian Olympian, gold medalist. Give us some love. You have been watching Dare to Be Great. We are grateful to the following sponsors. The Hilton Hotel in Nassau, Bahamas. BTC. Burgo Car Rentals, Terry Delancey. Texaco Prince Charles, Rodney Eve. Five Point Systems and Adler Realty, Osborne Stewart. Dare to be great would like to send out some special shout outs to Pauline Bailey Barbados, Dorothy Davis in the Cayman Islands, the staff at ASU Draw, Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Gomez in the Bahamas, Willamay DeVoe in Nassau, Judy Wilkinson in Barbados, Senator John Hodge in St. Martin, Roland Jackson in the Cayman Islands, and Canaan Basil Tynes and the St. Barnabas Church family. If you would like to book Mr. Philderson for a future engagement, please contact us at 242-364-4011 or email us at phoenixinstitute at gmail.com.